Hello, good morning. You're very welcome along to Ireland AM. Brand new week on Virgin Media One. It is indeed. It's Monday, the 22nd of May. And here's what's coming up today. Now, here's a question for you. Are you a godparent? Because being a godparent mm. comes with a lot of responsibility or does Or does that? it? Is it just about giving the, the bigger present? The, the, you know, <laughs> instead of giving the blue note, you That's have to give the yellow note. isn't it, as well? Extra anyway, cash. Uh, everyone feels good about uh, taking on the role, or do you? Let us know. We'd love to know what you think about being godparent. Uh, or has someone ever said no to being a godparent to you? I don't know. Seems That's a bit lousy. No, I don't like your kid. Uh, text us 0896 um, After 8, we're also going to be talking about Philip Schofield's shock resignation from this morning. Everyone's been chatting about it. And with the summer holidays fast approaching, if you're looking for a kids' camp with a difference, then we're going to be finding out about a summer camp for budding archaeologists. And we're also going to be chatting about home chores a little bit later on, and a fella who wouldn't know a home chore if it came up and slapped him in the face. His lovely fake tanned <laughs> face. Bins out. I'm very dirty. Look you. who's back. I'm great at DIY. Do you, you take the bins out? I do. I, I love DIY. I always say, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to someone else. To somebody else. To someone else. <laughs> uh, coming up, the one and only. And she's got a lovely tan as well. She was away relaxing mm -hmm. in Portugal. Catherine Layden will be here serving up her famous savoury flan. Plus, in fashion, we're looking at styles to suit any party invite that you might be getting. But now let's go over to the Virgin Media News Hub and here's Geraldine Lina. Thanks, Alan. Good morning. A post-mortem will be carried out today on the body of a young woman who died after she was struck by a guard the car in the early hours of yesterday morning in County Donegal. GSOC is carrying out an investigation. The collision happened at 3.15 on Sunday morning at Ludden outside Buncrana. The 21-year-old woman died after being hit by a guard the patrol car. The young woman was a pedestrian and nobody else was injured in the incident. Two members of Angarda Siakona were in the car at the time on duty on patrol in the area. The woman, believed to be from Derry, had travelled to Buncrana to spend the weekend with friends. A forensic examination of the scene was carried out during the day yesterday and the incident has now been referred to GSOC. A full investigation will take place into what occurred. A post-mortem will be carried out on the woman's body later today at Letterkenny University Hospital. Ashling Nikoshthala, Virgin Media News. New measures will be signed into law today which will require alcohol products to carry health information labels. The labels will have to inform consumers that drinking alcohol can cause liver disease and certain cancers and will highlight the dangers of drinking alcohol while pregnant. They'll also contain information about the calorie content of a product. Minister for Health Stephen Donnelly will sign the measures into law today. A man has been questioned by Gardaí following a major drug seizure at Dublin Port. 142 kilos of herbal cannabis with an estimated street value of 2.84 million euro was recovered when revenue officers stopped and searched a vehicle which had arrived from France yesterday. A man in his 40s was arrested and has been held at a Dublin Garda station. Garda are appealing for witnesses after an accident in County Mayo in which a 13-year-old boy was killed. He was the driver and sole occupant of a tractor which overturned on a local road near Clare Morris on Saturday evening. The boy died yesterday at Temple Street Hospital in Dublin. Gardaí have carried out a technical examination of the scene of the accident and are asking for anyone who may have witnessed it to get in touch. In Greece, the Conservative Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis has won the national elections and called his party's victory a political earthquake. His new democracy party look on course to claim 41% of the vote, five seats short of a majority. The rival Syriza party had a bad day at the polls, clinching just 20% of the ballot. A possible second election in late June could see the new democracy party picking up bonus seats, avoiding the need to go into a coalition. A red alert remains in place in northern Italy because of heavy rain and the danger of landslides. At least 14 people have died so far as a result of flooding in the region. Pope Francis sending his prayers to the people of Emilia Romagna, which has been hit by unprecedented storms and flooding. More than 36,000 people have been evacuated, where six months' rain fell in a day and a half. People sought refuge on the rooftops of their homes after 21 rivers broke their banks, submerging entire towns and closing over 600 roads. There's still a red alert in the area due to the incessant rain and the danger of landslides. 
More than 4,000 operations have been carried out by firefighters who are still working to reach towns and villages that have been cut off. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney landed in Emilia-Romagna yesterday to visit the flooded areas after returning early from the G7 summit in Japan. The flooded areas continue to be cleaned up thanks to the help of more than 1,500 volunteers from all over Italy. An emergency meeting to address the situation will be held tomorrow. It's hoped funding will be fast-tracked to the region to help those caught up in the disaster. Trish Laverty, Virgin Media News. A new campaign will be launched today highlighting the fact that threatening to share intimate images of another person is illegal. The campaign calls serious consequences will run on TV, cinema, radio and on social media. Minister for Justice Simon Harris, who will launch the campaign later, says research carried out shows that half the population does not know that threatening to share intimate images is a crime. The new laws came into force in 2021. And finally for now, a volcano in Mexico has been erupting and temporarily shut down Mexico City's international airport at the weekend. The eruptions have caused towering clouds of ash to cover nearby areas. Schools in 11 villages have been shut as a precaution. Officials say the threat posed by the volcano remains at an intermediate level, although they are closely monitoring the situation. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This morning should begin mostly dry, bright and clearer through northern areas. As the morning progresses, cloud amounts will decrease through southern areas, giving way to some nice prolonged spells of sunshine. Highest temperatures of 14 to 18 degrees. A pleasant afternoon ahead with clear, bright, sunny spells for most areas, aside from western areas of Ulster and Connacht. The winds will remain light with maximum temperatures of 15 to 18 degrees. And staying dry tonight with a fair amount of cloud around, showers are likely through months Lowest temperatures overnight of 3 to 9 degrees. Chill insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times, its headline. Vacant office block set to be repurposed for housing. Minister for Housing Dara O'Brien has lobbied Minister for Enterprise Simon Coveney on the issue, seeking his support for a plan to convert offices that were built during the recent construction boom but are now underused. Struggling families in line for tax break worth €1,000. Taoiseach Leo Varadkar and his party want considerably larger cuts to income tax and the universal social charge than in previous years as a result of the record budget surpluses being projected over the next four years. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The examiner leads with CUH staff query hospital advisor roles. Frontline staff at Cork University Hospital have questioned why PricewaterhouseCoopers consultants have earned fees which could run to more than €1 million Euro at a time when services are stretched to breaking point. The mayor goes with Katie's armed guard. The Garda's elite armed SWAT unit was called in to provide a gun guard for the Katie Taylor fight. The mayor has also learned the emergency response unit went undercover in the crowd for Saturday fight uh, uh, as Superstar faced off in the three arena. The star leads with killed in Garda car tragedy. Tributes have been paid to Rebecca Brown, who died tragically after she was struck by a Garda car in the early hours of yesterday morning. Brown was returning from a night out with friends when the horror happened just outside Bunkrana in County Donegal. And the Sun also leads with that tragic story. Friends and family have been paying tributes online as the exact circumstances of the collision are not yet known as the Garda forensic examiners arrived on the scene at first light. The Herald's front page, gunman opens fire as children play. Detectives are hunting for a reckless gunman who opened fire in front of young children in Tala in Dublin yesterday. The gun attack is believed to be linked to a worsening dispute in the area, which has already seen a botched shooting and a firebomb attack in the past week. Nutrition crisis as we grow so few vegetables. Ireland is facing a nutrition crisis as 85% of our fruit and vegetables are imported as farmers here quit in their droves. Doctors and dietitians warn we need to add more vegetables to our diet. It has emerged that just 1% of all Irish farms now grow vegetables. And that is the top story on the Daily Mail.
That's where mm. it all went wrong at the weekend. Do you think that's it? Not enough veg? None, none of the more Irish veg. players <laughs> needed more veg. We are going to be discussing what's happened in this weekend's sport, and I think everyone's talking about Katie Taylor. There's such a love for her, but is it is it time for her to give up? What do you reckon? 0896-111-111. We're talking about Taylor's dramatic loss in the three arena to drama. Off the pitch at the Champions Cup final. There was a whole lot of sport at the weekend. We're going to be discussing it after the break. See you. Very soon. See you in a minute. Like, after the break. There we go. Now, for some, being a godparent is an exciting role with a lot of responsibility. While others now might time. not be so keen on the idea. So join us this morning to discuss our news talks, Simon Tierney, who turned down being a godparent. Wow. And Siobhan O'Connor from the Sunday Mirror. Great to have you both with us. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Simon, let's kick it off. You turned down being a godparent. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't think it should be so much of a shock because I suppose there's a lot of people aren't practicing Catholics, might be Catholics in name, but um, I'm an atheist. Uh, so in order to be a godparent, you need to follow the rule of the law of the church. You need to be a practicing Catholic. Um, you need to accept the sacrament on behalf do of the you baby. Really? Well, you do. Like, if you take it seriously, well, if, if I'm asked if to I... do something, I'm going to take it seriously. Okay. Okay? If I brought you a Christmas present, would you take it? Well, now, that's a really good What's question. What's that got to do with no, anything? No, no, this, this is a good question <laughs> because, that's, that's, no, but it, that's... because because I think in, in a way we are cultural Catholics. Like, I would describe myself as a cultural Catholic in the sense that I will celebrate Christmas, but there's a little bit, it's a little bit more prescriptive with godparents, right? Because you are accepting the sacrament on behalf of the baby. So you are asked as a godparent if you are willing to renounce Satan and all his works. Okay, yeah. I, couldn't, oh, yeah. okay. I couldn't possibly, in good faith, do that. Who asked you? Okay. Uh, my sister asked me. Your sister. And, and how did she take it when you said she, no? She took it very well um, because she understood that uh, my choice was coming from a good place, place. and that I had considered it. Um, and that I suppose I didn't want to engage in what some people might describe as the kind of bouncy castle Catholic culture that we now have right, in Ireland. Right, yeah. I, really not, <laughs> really <laughs> not <laughs> that. Or the stretch, the <laughs> stretch <laughs> limo bouncy <laughs> castle <laughs> Ireland. That's exactly yeah. what I am, I suppose. Are you, are you Siobhan? Are you yeah. Siobhan? I, I wouldn't say bouncy now. Um, I'd say a la carte, isn't that the kind of... Oh, right. pick and choose. You pick and choose. I, I, liked what, I liked how brave you are, and especially turning down your sister. Um, but... Bouncy Castle Catholics, we all send our kids, most of us, to the school that's nearest the, our house. Mm -hmm. So we're sending them to a school down the road. We're going to communions. We're going to confirmations. We're doing all that. And is that OK? Is it, you know, is it OK to be a la carte? Is it OK to be a godparent and to give the presents at Christmas, to be there for the child, to actually be metaphorical in our sense? Because most of us... I have a little bit of faith. So yeah. are you a godparent? I am to two. Now, so you're a godparent twice. So can I ask you then, like the definition of a godparent is, as far as I'm concerned, is that if anything tragically happened to the parents, it's your then responsibility for that child. Yes. So yes. Is, does, is that realistic as far as you're <laughs> well, concerned? Given I... a present. No, I mean, if anything... <laughs> Tommy's like, is that what I signed up to? Yeah. <laughs> How much did you put yeah, the exactly. this year? But I mean, is that not what the thing is for guidance as well? But if anything tragic happened to them, that they might look to you to maybe... Not in law, though. I no, think but not that in law, a, but like the, the guidance, idea. that sort of thing. Yeah. But then that idea is in people's sure. heads. Yeah, definitely. As, oh, I'm the godparents if anything happened. Are you stressed by your role? Well, See, I would be stressed by that, yes. Are you a godfather? I am. Oh, it's great. What, well, <laughs> why? What do you see the role as a godparent then? Well, you know, it's an honour. When I got my first honour to be a godparent, I was 13, which was extremely more exciting because mm. you're re I was really into God then. Um, Simon, sorry. Um, and, you no know, and, and as we get older, we sort of... Well, I certainly... Ha uh, you, you know, become more ambivalent. But when you're younger and you're in mass, you know, you're kind of been shoved there, right? Mm -hmm. When you're our age, you're on the fence about it, aren't you? You're kind of thinking, is there, isn't it, is it, is it? And to be a godparent was a great honour when I was 13. Then to get be a godparent to my, my sister's son was fabulous because I was sort of special. 
and it's ritualistic. And are we going to just bin rituals for the sake of it's whether we believe or we don't yeah. believe? Or are we sort of allowed to sort of half believe? I mean, it's a great further debate. We could half believe it, you know. <clears throat> exactly. Are, we, are you reading a little bit too much into it at the end of the day? This is to be a godparent. It's to be there as a guide maybe for your sister's children. Like, but Tommy, are you even a guide? Like, <laughs> like Shikana, you're 13, you're asked to be a well, godparent. What guidance I was could great. you... I was babysitting. Okay, I mean, that's, no, that's fair enough, Tommy. Oh, there you go. I think <laughs> that's what I mean, Alan. I don't know. I think we're maybe reading a little bit too much. But into Tommy, it I think you've hit the nail on the head. I, I think we should read too much into it, and why? this is why. Because there's a broader issue here, right? Is that? Can we not get too serious? Siobhan, I love Siobhan, I love how serious no, but you are. Siobhan mentioned a moment ago about how you know we send our kids to the schools that are nearest us, that there's communions happening. The broader issue here is that if you're not really into being a Catholic and bringing your kids up as Catholic. By bringing your kids through the communion system, by engaging godparents in that process, you are validating the, the educational system that we have where 90% of our national schools are still controlled by the Catholic Church, even though so many, so many I mean, parents are crying out for more choice for more non-denominational schools. We've had a, a, a commitment to divestment by the government, which has been a farce. So few schools have been divested of Catholic patronage. So by but choosing to have godparents are... or by choosing to put your kids mm. through a communion system, you are signing up to the status quo, to maintaining that. And we need more choice for our parents and for our kids in our national school system. Do you system. agree, Sean? Well, uh, not really. Uh, what about the fact that God is love? And that it's all starting with love. So, you know, if we take a little bit of it, what's wrong with that? that but that's yeah, but that's your belief. I don't believe that God is love. But I what, don't believe you in know, God. Okay, so you don't so, have godparents and then you have nothing. But you can't so make you that... Is, is it not okay not to have godparents? Oh, well, I mean, the, well, okay, like, it takes a village, right? Uh, I'm telling you, it takes a village, as we know, to rear kids. What harm is it having an extra pair of hands around, having an extra guide parent or godparent? So is that what so they are, are then? They're... It, are they what? Are they just an extra pair of hands to help you? Well, I mean... Because you can well, call I on the godparent, you're a godparent. I used to really look up well, to I, my godparents. Yes, and, well. not that, uh, and not for any yeah. real reason, but just because, ah, oh, they're my god, like, they're... Is it okay to uh, have it a was bit a, of a ritual about it? You, am I right? Is your wife... Your wife is Christian, though. She it, is, yeah. So how does that relationship go between the two of you and with decisions about going to potentially with kids going to school or deciding to godparents, whatever else? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because she is Christian, but she's not Catholic. So she would agree with me that, there, that we shouldn't have this, uh, you know, 90% of our schools being Catholic. Um, she would like more choice. Um, for, for certain, but, but would um, she agree with godparents? With the godparenting thing, she would like to have a godparent, but oh. our kids oh. are. Oh, it's a dinner yeah, you're opening up a can of worms now. <laughs> uh, she, our kids are three and one. Um, neither of them are baptized, um, so we don't know what's going to happen. We're going through this process. She's probably watching this now, going. <laughs> oh, I mean, so yeah, is it a thing we're discussing, though? Is it a thing like l l l let them make the decision? if they want to be baptised when they get to a certain age where they can make that decision themselves. I would really like that. Um, but, you know, uh, when you're in a marriage, you, as I'm learning, <laughs> um, you, you have to, to find compromise, but we haven't made a decision on it yet. But uh, Would you be insulted if someone refused to be a godparent? Absolutely, <clears throat> especially when you just have the baby. Yeah. And you're so vulnerable and someone you're so, you know, your hormones are racing and then your sister asks you to be a godfather and you say no. I think you're a very but brave. Siobhan, How are why, you now with her? But why okay? would you why would you be offended by someone just adhering to their beliefs? Yeah. In, but, in, but you see, is it not more than just a belief? Is it not an honour? And that she's bestowing on you, and she's tr entrusting in you, and she's saying this is a great honour for you, and then you're saying no. Well, look, at that's that's the question, isn't it? And uh, we'd love to throw that out to you this morning if you're watching. Is it an honour? Is it just maybe that you have to give him more money? You have to give a better present? Yeah. Do, would you feel you give more money and better presents to your godchildren? You can just give love, Alan. Oh. <laughs>
it's all about love. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we would love to hear from you at home on this. Are you a godparent or have you turned it down or had someone else turn it down? Uh, let us know what you think on it. Yes, listen, thank you so much. Uh, Simon Tierney from uh, News Talk and Siobhan O'Connor from Sunday Mirror. Thank you both for joining. It's fascinating. Very Get in touch now. Let us know. 0896 triple one triple one i think we're going to be inundated <laughs> with lots of messages uh, on this after the break we're going to be delving into the top stories making this morning's paper see you very shortly thanks guys Welcome back. It's time for a closer look at some of the stories making the headlines. We are joined by Sinead O'Carroll, editor of the journal.ie. Sinead, it's lovely Hi, to have you with us. We're Thank talking you. about a tax break yes. that might be coming in for struggling families. We will be talking about a lot of tax breaks, I think, and a lot of budget things for the next few months. Uh, oh, as we head. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, we're heading towards election budget season, which is always uh, a fun way of flying kites, as they say. Yes. So, um, obviously, when we have a surplus, we have you know th these billions coming in um, from corporate tax, and people want to spend them. So, th uh, three junior ministers have written saying we should be giving average wage workers and average income families tax breaks um, of a thousand euro. Fine Gael, that this is how they want to spend okay. some of that money. So most economists, if you had economists sitting here, they would say, if you have a surplus, and especially if these surpluses are because of things that are not steady, like corporate yeah. finance, mm -hmm. corporate tax, uh, you should not increase public expenditure. You should yes. not increase spend everyday expenditure because obviously if it stops stop. going, yeah, you know, exactly. like household budgets, we'd all know yeah. that. Stephen Kinsler from UL has talked about this time and time again on The Tonight Show going, okay guys, whatever about roads and capital spending, we but we do not own this money. Yeah, and it keeps so, on talking. So about everyone this. says it, we should capital spend it rather than current expenditure. Exactly. But the problem with that is we have to be good at spending yeah. capital money, and in and Ireland so we are not very good at it. No. Okay. We have no we have no projects that show good examples of no. that. So obviously then politicians look and say, right, how can we gain from it? And tax breaks and tax cuts and tax reliefs are always you know come top of the pile. So I don't want to be a killjoy. You know, it'd be lovely to get a, an extra thousand euro next year. Or the year and this after, is for the mean income household has been adjusted for inflation but the CSO the figures are about 55,000 yeah. euro so there will be a thousand euro tax break for yeah. households. And I think probably that. what we are going to get is because Fina Gael have talked about this we are going to get a, an adjustment of tax bans again so like last year there's you know the the highest tax brand is now 40,000 that's going to increase again so I think we're definitely going to see those adjustments so people will okay. but that's probably standing still because of inflation so you know there, some of that will should um, and will happen. Yeah, yeah. very interesting mm -hmm. okay uh, let's move on to the the next story is from the Daily Mail this morning and this is another I suppose I can't say I'm hugely surprised uh, given how difficult it is for farmers that we're hearing all the time but 85% of our fruit and veg are actually imported here in Ireland. Yeah, so 60 tonnes of apples, 38,500 tonnes of onions, 25,000 cabbages, 20,000 tonnes of carrots, 75,000 tonnes of potatoes, all imported in 2020. So the Daily Mail had these figures. Oh. Um, and these are all things that are easily grown that, here. Yeah, tonnes so of potatoes, do I you think, mean? Yeah. yeah, like we we obviously get used to eating things out of season or eating things that don't grow yeah. in Ireland. So all of those yeah. have to be imported, you know. So uh, we get so used to that, but now we're importing things that we actually probably think come from down the road or at least from just another part of the country. Yeah. No, they get imported in and um, obviously there's there's two sides. This is the nutritional side. So to the Daily Mail talk to Cork based nutritionist Mark Carmody and he said like we actually locally store stuff is better for vitamin C and D and also there's the environmental side as well, the carbon footprint of yeah. importation. Yeah. Now that's not saying that it's always like if you talk to environment uh, experts, they won't, they won't say the local thing is, you know, a fix all, but you know, there's less plastic, there's probably less pesticides, especially if you're buying in, you know, organic Yeah, but it's also, you've got right down the you've road. got farmers fighting against below-cost selling, which is happening in supermarkets all mm. over the place, and Irish farmers going, well, it costs me way more to grow this. We can't do that. Yeah, and one of the farmers that they talked to said his Brussels sprouts ended up just being sold to other farmers for cattle to feed on because he couldn't really? sell into uh, the, supermarkets the supermarkets because he couldn't sell his sprouts at that low cost. But then when we're yeah. hearing about the national herd and you're talking about carbon emissions or whatever and trying to cut back on meat production, 
maybe the government should be trying to source and actually encourage farmers to go and look at grow your own. Yeah, there should be, you would think that there should be a much bigger mix of vegetable growing yeah. and, mm. and crop growing here. But, but the yeah, is, this, yeah, only 1% of farmers are, are growing vegetables. Yeah. Like 1% like, is yeah, incredible. But it's a really, it's a labour intensive job. It's hard to do. We've got a minimum wage here. So when it's done in other countries, and, and it's, then, it's, it's not as highly valued. It's not as expensive yeah, to do in other countries. Yeah, and you're to the weather as well. Exactly. In Ireland. So if you talk to farmers who have crops, you know, if they're looking all the time at, you know, one bad crop, one bad harvest can <laughs> ruin them for years. So if you watch really Clarkson's surprising. Farm on Amazon, tell you, it's all it's crazy. It's his favorite very show. It's, it's really it's good. His favorite show. Yeah, it, it is Jeopardy. Good. There's Jeopardy yeah. in it. Like, We're going to get him. He'll be a presenter on Ears the, the Ground before we know it. Oh, okay. Or I could he be presenting, that. I don't know, dun, dun, this morning, dun. Saturday night takeaway? Oh, ITV are having a little bit of a mare at the moment. The odds are out there at the minute. Are you going to cheat on We're in with Hollywood? Is this what she's saying? No. The early mornings were getting to us. We're going to move back a couple of hours. Is that what it is? He's going to London. Oh, you're, bring, you're bringing so. Mirren with you. So oh, we're all going. Oh, no, he's not we're bringing me going. with me. It's me. Um, so we've got Patrick Hilty has been confirmed. Weekend. Yes, it was a really great telly news weekend. Yeah, yeah Patrick Hilty confirmed. So I don't think anyone was surprised by that. No. But the release came in, uh, the news came in from Worty on, on Saturday afternoon. Have you signed afternoon. up as a, as a guest? No, I have as first not. Guest? No, no, no. Okay. They obviously wanted to get it done before Ryan Tuberty's last show yeah. on yeah. Friday so that, it, you know, he could will kind the, of sail off interview him, do you think? Oh, we were trying to decide. So it depends on, like... It's a good does move, Ryan right? Does Ryan want to be seen to kind of hand it over so it's still kind of his to hand over? Or does, do you want to make you sure that he gets the late. good goodbye and, and let Patrick Kilty start it? Do you think it should not be called the Late Late Show anymore? Like, does it have to be all changed? I think it should be still called the Late Late Show. You? I think that's the... So people have talked about it being waning show and, you know, that it's a poison chalice yeah. that people don't want it because, like, people... But, a lot of people don't watch traditional telly anymore. Exactly, yeah. 400,000 people. But a lot of people, people still do. Look at this show and its so, success and hundreds of thousands of people. So it's still really an does. amazing We'd game. love to hear from you. It's 0896 111 What do you think about pa Patrick Hilty? Should it still be the Late Late Show? Sinead Best Carroll luck to him. from The Journal. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Alan. Hi, Alan. Yes, now. So, well, yeah, I think it should be changed anyway. It should be a more of a Graham Norton type show, maybe recorded on the Thursday. Ooh. But who am I to know? Who what am I to say anything? Now, still to come this morning, we're going to be discussing the importance of organ donation. We're also going to be chatting about, well, Philip Schofield's shock resignation from this morning. And Catherine Layden is back in the kitchen from Savory Flan. We're looking forward to that. We'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Monday's Ireland AM. Here's what's coming up this hour. Yeah, gifting a family through the hope of organ donation. Mm -hmm. Very shortly, we are going to be chatting to Naomi Dunleavy about donating her late son's organs after a tragic car accident. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Chat to her in just a while. Philip Schofield, he is gone. The speculation has been rife for the last couple of weeks. Yes. We'll be taking a look at what went on behind the scenes of this morning. It makes it seem like we know. We don't. We don't know. Oh, we know. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, we know. We know. And you're oh, going to find out at 8.45. You're such a click. You're such a click, Bader. Uh, with the summer camp season <laughs> around the corner, we're also going to be finding out a brand new camp that offers children hands-on educational fun through archaeology. Oh, we know all about that too, don't we? <laughs> no, we don't. We know. Uh, now let's see what's happening. Let's cook it in the kitchen, Alon. Oh, all the gossip on Philip. We love it. <laughs> Catherine Layden is here. Look at this. Oh, look at this coming out. Oh, nice. Savoury quiche. Savoury flan or quiche. Savoury flan yeah. or quiche. Is it the same? Savoury flan. Yeah, cheese, ham, onion, tomato, eggs, milk, and a bit of pastry. Yum. Yum. Done. Done. It's very simple. Very simple. Watch. That looks absolutely gorgeous. You're going to put it back in. You're just... Oh, yeah. Don't watch your hands. Oh, Go on, put it back in, because it's not oh, quite done. Oh, she, oh. Doesn't want to, she doesn't want it to drop. <laughs> Just want to give us a little, to a little tease of Fair what we're getting. Yeah. That's yeah. coming up a little later on with the Queen of Baking herself. Let's take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, vacant office blocks set to be repurposed for housing. Minister for Housing Dara O'Brien has lobbied Enterprise Minister for Enterprise Simon Coveney on the issue, seeking his support for a plan to convert offices that were built during the recent construction boom but are now underused. 
Struggling families in line for tax break worth €1,000. Tisha Cleo Bradgrand is party want considerably larger cuts to income tax and the universal social charge than in previous years as a result of the record budget surpluses being projected over the next four years. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The examiner leads with CUH staff query hospital advisor roles. Frontline staff at Cork University Hospital have questioned why Price Waterhouse Coopers consultants have earned fees which could run to more than €1 million Euro at a time when services are stretched to breaking point. The mirror goes with Katie's armed guard. The Garda's elite armed SWAT unit was called in to provide a gun guard for the Katie Taylor fight. The star leads with killed in Garda car tragedy. Tributes have been paid to Rebecca Brown, who died tragically after she was struck by a Garda car in the early hours of yesterday morning. Brown was returning from a night out with friends when the horror happened just outside Boncrana in County Donegal. Son also leads with that tragic story. Friends and family have been paying tributes online as the exact circumstances of the collision are not yet known as Garda forensic examiners arrived on the scene at first light. The Herald's front page, gunman opens fire as children play. Detectives are hunting for a reckless gunman who opened fire in front of young children in Tala in Dublin yesterday. The gun attack is believed to be linked to a worsening dispute in the area, which has already seen a botched shooting and a firebomb attack in the past week. A nutrition crisis as we grow so few vegetables. Ireland is facing a nutrition crisis as 85% of our fruit and vegetables are imported. That is the top story on the Daily Mail. Now we have a lot of texts in, Al, we were talking about being a godparent and yeah, actually we, turning down. I knew we would get yeah. inundated by this and we had News Talk Simon Tierney in a while ago and because he turned down and his reason for turning his them... His sister asked his him. His sister yeah. asked him and he said, like, he wasn't a Catholic, he didn't believe in the whole ethos of the way a godparent should, the whole idea yeah. of a godparent. So we just said to her, no, and she said she was quite happy with that. Grant. Well, we've been inundated because we asked you. <laughs> and Deirdre says, I've 10 godchildren and felt so privileged to be asked for each one. I love being a godparent and wouldn't give it up for the world. That's an expense at Christmas. Of presents, That's a lot it? of presents yeah. at Christmas. I'm trying to remember all the birthdays. Yes. That would be difficult. Written all down. Right. Uh, Margaret, I turned down being a godparent twice and was happy to do it. I love being an aunt, but I'm not Catholic and I don't want to subscribe to something I don't believe in. What there if they you asked go. you to be like a guardian then? Like if they yeah. went, hi, yeah, can we put you in the will so that you'll mind the kids once we're gone? Because well, you have that, to kind you know, of do that's that. A different, it, that's well, maybe it's not a different thing. But like, I just think, are we maybe reading a little bit too much into it? Like it's for kids maybe just as a godparent. It's a nice thing, surely, no? I know, I'm just wondering, but isn't that what it's all about? About. Like, because I always remember asking my mom about my godparents. I was like, if something happens to ye, am I, or, like, are they was, become my was, parent? And she was like, but, oh no, oh no, 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 that, no they're that not. That was my thing they're earlier not. on as well, because that was sort of the idea, was it years ago, that yeah. you were someone like that, if God forbid, if anything happened to us, you had your godparents there to look after you. But legally, that was never going to happen. Are your godparents, would they have been from the same family? You see, my godparents. One was from my mum's side, one, one was from, from the, my dad's yeah. side. Yeah, so, so who, what's what happens talking? then? Who yeah. gets I always like, are you splitting us down the middle? What's exactly, going on and there? then people ask just friends. Yeah. Yeah. So Siobhan O'Connor was in, she was like from, uh, from the Sunday uh, yeah. Mirror, and um, she was 13 when she was first asked to be godparent. But that's what I think. No, I mean, it's fun. Like, I don't think it's a very serious, like a lot of, I'm certainly, I, well, I, Ruth says here, there is an alternative to godparents. I'm not religious, but I am a guide parent to my niece and will become a guide parent to my new nephew. I love my role and think more people should consider a non-religious option. And if something happens to the parent, are you then taking over the children? No, no. Catra's going no over there. Are well, you a Katra, godparent? Yeah, you, go, we'll, we'll chat yeah, to you okay. later because John says I'm a godparent to two Church of Ireland children and we have a legal agreement with their parents that if any hap anything happens to them, we will become their legal guardians. I'm honoured to be considered for this and would never give it up as a role. I think I'd be a bit insulted if I asked somebody and they said no. Jay, but if they literally not? said... Who says no to Tommy Bow? Well, I'd be just a bit like, why not? Like, no, but Tommy, if I sort of said... Asking, if you said, turned around to me and I'm said... I'm asking you to take them to mass. No, like, OK. But, like, what if somebody says, like, I'm not the best role model in the world and to be guiding your children, I don't think I'm a good... No, like, seriously, would you not accept if somebody said that to you? Like, um, I don't think I'd well, be a great role case, model for your children. If that was children. the case, I would say, yeah, no, fair enough, you are actually a terrible role <laughs> model and I don't want you to look after my children. <laughs> 
But if it was because that you don't believe in, uh, you know, you're not a Catholic, yeah. whatever, I said, it's not about that for me personally. Let he's us just, know what he's you just like, will mm. you give my kid the 50s or not? Is that what it is? 0896 <laughs> so I don't have to. Triple one. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we'll talk to you very shortly right here on Ireland AM. <laughs> You're very welcome back to the show. Now, if something happened to a loved one, would you take the decision to donate their organs? This morning, we are joined by Naomi Dunleavy, who honoured the wishes of her late son, Aaron, to donate his organs. We're also joined by HSE Clinical Lead of Organ Donation Transplant Ireland, Dr. Catherine Motherway Naomi. Catherine, thank you both so much for being with us morning. this morning. And obviously something tragic has happened in your life, Naomi. Your lovely son, Aaron, passed away just over a year ago. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Oh, <laughs> um, well, Aaron for us was always joy. He was joyful um, as a young child and even as a teenager, he was always smiling. Very, very positive minded, uh, really, really popular in school. Um, he wasn't great academically, but he was really, really good at word work. And he was a bit of a charmer and just loved by everybody. Um, it, and he always had a really positive mindset. So. You know, even with him passing, we try to stay as positive as he was. Um, um, I can't think of anything more to say about him. Uh, he's just he, he's, fabulous person. Yeah, yeah. Even... he was a, sorry. He was a swim teacher as well. Gosh, I have to mention that because mm. yesterday, actually, that's I'm a little bit ropey at the moment because yesterday we were doing the Ducky Deed Derby, which was a swim relay race, um, and it was to have organ donor families and uh, recipients swimming together as a team. And that was to honour Aaron's memory because he was a swim teacher. And it was an amazing event. Um, I, I don't know if you managed to get the photograph, but actually the winning team, um, we had uh, Patrick Sands, there who's done it. Oh, fantastic, yeah. he did, brilliant. Yeah, so we had Kira uh, Williams was the overall winner. Um, Paula, who's actually an Aura staff member, Next to her then is uh, Fionn, actually, who's mm. a friend of Aaron's. And Patrick Sands from a donor family. Mark Tui, who's an organ recipient, a two-time organ recipient. And then uh, Tracy O'Hare, who's actually the daughter of a neighbour. So we couldn't Good have got a better it. team. Lovely yeah. derby, <laughs> gorgeous. Oh, and not to mention our eldest son, Adam, was at the end was there. there. A good-looking well. chap at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can you take us back to, the, because he was involved in a car crash. Yeah. <clears throat> and... You got the news. You didn't realise you thought it wasn't going to be serious. No. Turned up at the hospital and unfortunately that wasn't the case. No, it, it, it was a huge shock because um, we thought that it was actually only minor injuries that we were coming to. But we very, very quickly realised with the way the staff in Our Lady of Lourdes, who were just wonderful, how they were treating us. We were thinking, you don't get treated like this for minor injuries. So... We realised very, very quickly how serious it was. Um, the nurses were so good and they explained to us about his injuries. We didn't really understand it at the time, but we, we realised since he was Glasgow Coma 3, which is the worst prognosis you can have. Um, but the hospital did absolutely everything they could to bring him back. And Aaron's friends were amazing. We reached out to them. We asked them to play positive messages, which we had on WhatsApp. And we played that for Aaron because, like, I mean, we, we were trying to think, what do we say? We had kept talking. We were there with him for two days. So we wanted to just give him words of encouragement. So his friends were very, very positive. Um, but there came a point where both David, my husband and myself, um, we had to leave the room for a while because they had a change in the nurses in their shift. And when we went back into the room, um, we just had a moment of knowing that he wasn't there anymore. We, we, we could just see. I, it's very difficult for me to explain to people, um, but it, it, it's his aura or something just seemed to be gone. So at that point, we, we realised, OK, our Aaron isn't here anymore. We knew from him um, two things. Firstly, we knew that he wouldn't have wanted to have been brought back anyway unless, you know, he was fairly well able to do things. Um, and at that point, we also realised, OK, we want to donate his organs because we were looking for hope 
yeah. because it, it was it was such a sudden tragic end and I mean it like it, it's like you're going full steam in your life and you know we were just getting ready for Aaron he was just developing into a man and then all of a sudden you have to say except he's not here anymore so we had had the conversation several times before about organ donation but at that time when we were talking it was light-hearted and it was always about the recipients yeah. okay and this was with Aaron yeah while he was still with us like yeah. it, it, it was just a light-hearted conversation you see our family have a wicked sense of humor and Aaron especially mm. yeah and I mean Aaron and, and Adam's comment at the time was look sure it's no big deal we're not going to need our organs where we're going anyway yeah. so we we spoke about it very flippantly but in the moment when we were there with Aaron, like I'll be honest, we, our world got very, very small. And it was just us and Aaron. And what does Aaron want? And what, what do we want out of this? So for hope for us and to honour his wishes, we did donate his organs. And, and four recipients now are alive and well because Emer Shields, the organ donor coordinator that works with Catherine, um, she's kept us informed. We obviously don't know the details yeah. of the recipients, but we do know that they're doing well. That's so four amazing. people. Yeah, four. That Aaron yes. has helped. Yes. Which that is, are here. That are here. And just one really special thing for me is David had suggested I listen to Aaron's heartbeat while he was in the hospital. Yeah. So I actually lay my head down on him and um, I listen to his heartbeat. And now I just think that there's somebody here on earth and he's, his heart is still here. No, I'm fine. Honestly, I always I talk through the tears. The tears are always below the surface anyway. Always there. Of course yeah. there. This is That's it's incredible. beautiful. And the fact you're here and you're all about positivity and hope. Yes. And your son Aaron was only 20. But Catherine, this is such a vulnerable position that people are in when they're thinking about this. Like it has to be very difficult to approach people and talk about it. Obviously, Aaron, they wanted to do this. Well, it is, but it is very important that we offer this opportunity yeah. to people at the end of life where it's appropriate. I think it's, you know, it's, it's something that we do our level best to do, to offer the opportunity to make this part of the end of life care that somebody receives if it's the right thing to do, because it does bring hope mm. to those families that want to do it, that particularly if they know the wishes of their loved one. And it's really important that people have the conversation, that they don't leave your family in doubt. And yes, for, for Naomi, it was flippant. For my husband, he knows right well that I want to be an organ donor. He had yeah. to sign several cards over the years. The old fashioned license, you used to have to get a signature on yep. it. Yeah. Um, now you use 115. So like, find what a way- What do you mean you use 115? When you're getting your application online, yeah. it'll ask you, and then if, if you have cho if you ticked yes to the box, before it was a box yep. in the old okay. pink one, yep. but now it's 115, it's written at the, at the bottom of the corner of the licence. On, you on your licence, that's license, what it is on, now. Yeah. And over, I think, a million and a half people actually have it on their licence. Yeah. So, because we do in Ireland have one of the highest rates of organ donation in the world, I gather. But yeah, We're mid-range at the moment, as, 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 roughly. Well, the, what more can be done? So we can ensure that there is a system where families are supported at this decision at the end of life. We can ensure, hopefully, that we offer the opportunity where it's appropriate for people to honour the wishes of their loved ones mm. and not think that, no, we shouldn't do this. It's very important that we approach the families where it's appropriate and we can ensure that that system is resourced. And the legislation that's to come does actually underpin what we know. We know that most people would like if something sudden and untoward should happen to them that their organs would be used. We know that over 80% of the population mm. would like that. This is but the legislation they were discussing. That bill. Yeah, but yeah. that was being brought in whereby you would actively have to opt out. Everyone yes. would be considered an organ donor. Yes, but you, have to, you have to opt out. But we yeah. still have to talk to the families. Yeah. Yes. So you still have to talk to your family. I will still have to ask the family of the person who has gone. So I need to make sure. What's that like for you when you go in in such a vulnerable situation? I know you've done it a lot of times, but surely it's got to be hard. Some people are up to it, some people aren't. It, it, is, it, is, it isn't. I mean, I, I consider it a really important part of care at the end of life in certain circumstances. And if a family say, yes, he would have wanted to do that, then I will do my level best to ensure that we find um, 
a recipient that is suitable because right. not everybody can, you know, find, yeah, do that. But we will do our level best to honour that wish. Yeah. And obviously for a family that don't want to do it, I entirely respect that wish exactly. too. But, my, but from your point of view, Naomi, it was a it was a flippant conversation, but to see four people who have benefited from yes. the decision that you had all made as a family mm -hmm. must be, I suppose, a, a, a shining light for you going forward. Yeah, and, and um, earlier on in the week, um, we were honoured to be invited to the launch of Organ Donation Awareness. And we got to meet recipient families and talk with them. And actually, when Catherine was mentioning there about they do their utmost to make sure that the organs are suitable for the recipient, I was talking with Kate, actually, Kate Tuig. Uh, she came to our derby yesterday. She's a liver uh, organ recipient. And she said that she had two phone calls. The first one didn't turn out, but it was because the um, surgeon had felt that the, the liver wasn't 100% suitable to her. There was only just a, a slight... I, I can't go into technical because yeah. I wouldn't know about the medical, but, yeah. but, but that it was just so important to them that they didn't just give her a liver. Yeah. They made sure it was that absolutely was right suitable for her. for her. And of course, there can be live uh, donations with things absolutely. like kidneys and, and yeah, livers Every as well. year we have... Um, between 30 and 50 live donors. Over 600 people have donated. There are living yeah. donors. We've had over 3,500 deceased donors. And there are, we know there are many families around the country who have been affected by this. And it's heartbreaking, Naomi. And for you to be here just over a year after Aaron's gone to talk about this, it's well, it's I want quite Aaron to be remembered for how he lived and how kind he was. And his last act of kindness was to donate his organs. So it's not a full tragedy. It's uh, not. It's, it's wonderful. It's incredible. It really is. Um, it is uh, Organ Donation Awareness Week, by the way, and you'll be able to find out more, of course, online um, uh, and everything like that. And as you mentioned, it's with your uh, driver's licence now as well that you can have it all there. Uh, Naomi Dunleavy, thank you so much for joining us today. And Dr Catherine, Mo uh, Catherine Motherway, HSE Clinical Lead of Organ Donation Transplant Ireland. Thank, thank you, you both, so guys. Much. Thank um... you. weekend, Philip Schofield announced his shock resignation from this morning. Our WhatsApp group the other day going, do you see? Do you see? Do you see? I, know, I was busy at the time too. Join <laughs> us to discuss his statement. And Holly going, are you around, Holly? Alleged fallout with Holly Willoughby, our Sarah Jane Tobin from Evoke.ie and Daniel Bird, assistant showbiz editor from The Mirror. Good morning, Daniel. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. With Sarah Jane, let's start off. It was, yes, the WhatsApp was going. I'd say. <laughs> Whenever he resigned, were you surprised? I was surprised that it came on Saturday afternoon, but then there was a little bit of method in the madness by the sounds of things, because he's headed straight to Cornwall and has been photographed um, with like paparazzi photographs, uh, hanging out with his mom and looking very forlorn and sad. So the idea is that basically he, uh, he was given the opportunity to just get the hell out of Dodge as soon as he could. Um, I kind of was a bit surprised. I didn't think his contract was up for renewal in September. So I didn't think that they were probably going to renew it. There was, there's was there been a lot of scandals attached to Philip in the last little while. Mm, yeah. so, Especially since Qgate on, yes, it's been a bad exactly. year. Exactly, it's just been one thing after another. So I, I don't think many people were expecting him to kind of last beyond the summer, but I think most people were expecting him to get up to the summer and then take the summer break. Okay. Well, Daniel, they say there's no smoke without fire and the stories that have been coming out of this morning for the past month, it has been frantic every single day. Sources, and I'm putting them in, uh, in inverted commas. So can you tell us what the state is? Is the place leaking like mad and was it inevitable that he would have to go and Holly would get to stay? I think, obviously, we, you mentioned QGate. I think everything has happened since then, and we've just seen scandal after scandal with Philip Schofield. But I also agree that the statement on Saturday was not expected. We were expecting it to happen maybe next month or in July, but it just all came together so suddenly after. I think it's 11 days of story after story now. But, Daniel, you said scandal after scandal. I mean, what really has happened? Because there was obviously Q Gate, there was his brother, his brother, obviously was convicted as a paedophile. And he got handed a sentence on Friday, yeah. But mm. that's nothing really to do with Philip. So what is it that's been the scandal that has actually caused him to actually leave the show? I think, obviously, he issued that statement via The Sun last Friday, I believe. Um, about the state of his friendship with Holly, saying that things had been tough for them, but sources said that neither Holly nor ITV knew he was going to issue that statement so suddenly. 
And do you think that it is because over the years we've obviously seen them going on holidays to Portugal. Um, also, there, you know, she has said that the only reason that I am sitting where I am is because Philip fought for me. So we've bought into this friendship. A lot of people have bought into this friendship. Mm. And are the rumours there that it has just fallen apart? We're, we're hearing about this feud. Is this a new thing since Qgate or how, were they never as good friends as we thought that they were? Uh, so sources allegedly said that since Holly decided to step away from their joint management in 2021, uh, the pair have just started to grow apart. And obviously with the recent scandal surrounding his brother, she allegedly found out about that through the media and Philip hadn't informed her that it was going to court. OK. Right. Is that reason for... I mean, like, when you see Eamon Holmes, Kim Woodburn, and a number of people have oh, been coming out yeah. in the media kind of dancing on his grave a little bit. I like, know. I like, don't they're, really... they're saying, like, a lot of people in within ITV are very jubilant today going into work that he's not there. So, you know, behind the scenes, apparently he wasn't the nicest person to deal with. Obviously, I don't know the chap at all, but uh, th these rumours have persisted for quite a while. Obviously, when Eamon Holmes and Ruth Langsford were let go from this morning, Eamon went for the jugular and yeah. you know, really kind of was like, they are not real people. Holly and Philip aren't the real deal. They're not what you see on camera. They said you should, they should have won a, a, a BAFTA, BAFTA for yeah. Best Actors. You know, yeah. like, I mean, he really went for the jugular. And oh, I also, think he does have an axe to grind. Like, let's does. just, let's put this in he context. Does. He yeah, has no, an axe you're to right. grind. But it was funny because Fern Britton then came out the other day. I don't know if you saw on her social media, yeah, she was commenting that she'd caught up with her old friend, uh, Eamon, and they had the chats and she was all delighted and, uh, you know, it was a good day. Um, and, you know... Because Fern obviously left in 2009 when Holly took over. She was for Holly. And it had been yes. very much that Philip had gone to bat for Holly and to get rid of Fern exactly. and that there's another story there. Rylan Clark has even another come out. One. And he's... What's loves... Rylan said now as well? But that's why he's not on uh, this morning anymore. Apparently, um... Philip has a huge amount of weight behind him in ITV and Rylan and himself didn't see eye to eye and Philip just went, gone. Because he sat right. on the sofa you, as well with Ruth. Do you think more going to come out? Because it's... Oh, yeah. Okay. I think this is only going to... This is a snowball now that's just going to keep going. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, what, like, like what else, Daniel, are we expecting to come out? Because in that statement, and ITV have issued a statement, and they have said that he will be getting his own primetime show. Sure. He will continue to do the Soap Awards. Mm. He will continue to do the Cube. So, obviously, they believe everything's OK with him. Yeah, so yesterday's sources came out and said that when Philip left this morning on Thursday, he struck a deal to ensure that he would get paid for six months as well as securing his own primetime TV show in exchange for deciding to walk away from this morning. OK, right. There you have it now, it's all. But then you always hear on the other side like that he's a lovely guy. I like know, We know it's... people who have worked there who have been, he's a really nice guy, I don't know what's going on here. I know, it's kind of strange. I think it's, I think it's, look, it's, there's a lot of egos as well attached to this whole thing. Suppose when you've and been at the top of your game for 20 exactly, years. Exactly, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know, I think with Holly, like her ship is... You know, I think do you think? Just... Do you think that they're not? They're a twosome. Do you not think that now that he's gone, she has to follow? I don't know. You see, I think she's really done a good job of trying to distance herself. <laughs> Well, um, well, the other well because that was always a thing. <laughs> They've always said that, that, oh, if you go, yeah. I'll go with you. They, no, all, they I, always made that as a pact, but I all think, of a sudden yeah. now the Phil's on rocky ground, she's like, no, nah, I don't want to be with you I anymore. I think she kind of, she's slowly but surely been distancing herself. Yeah. I think since 2019, when she stood in for Ant on uh, I'm a Celebrity, yes. then she got the Marks and Spencer deal and the Garnier deal, and she's kind of slowly but surely... She's cashed in. She's slowly but surely kind of distanced herself and gave herself she a She got the BBC bit. deal the as BBC well with Bradley deal. Walsh, yep. You know, I mean, she is slowly but surely kind of moving herself away from him. I think she kind of recognised the fact that if she stayed kind of so closely affiliated with Philip, there was only one way she was going to go. So, And I think her, her husband is also a TV executive with the BBC. Dan Baldwin, yeah. He's given her great advice. Mm. And he's really been, apparently, he's really been behind her, pushing her own agenda and her own... Oh, well, it's a bit yeah. cutthroat, isn't it? Um, I'm sure. Is it, is I'm sure. <laughs> not in Ireland. <laughs> not in Ireland. I'm sure plenty of people will be tuning into this morning. Uh, she is gone for two weeks. Obviously, Philip is gone. It's going to be Alison Hammond and Dermot O'Leary. It sure is. They'll yeah. have to make some sort of a joke, surely. But also, someone has lost their job. Well, 096 will... 111111. Love yeah. to hear from you. Will they make a joke? But Sarah Jane Tobin from uh, Vogue.a, great to have you with Thanks us. And Daniel you. Bird, assistant uh, showbiz editor of The Mirror. No doubt we're going to hear more from you in the next while. He's 
He's Daniel. waiting. He's on ITV <laughs> going, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Watching it like a hawk. Please Thanks a million, Daniel. get in touch. What Thanks. do you make of it? Do you think that Philip Schofield needed to resign from this morning? Were you a big fan? Who would you like to see replace him? Would you like to move to London? Oh, no. It'd be great, Imagine wouldn't living you? living in London. My goodness, no chance. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you very shortly. 0896 111 to get in contact. Up next, we've got... It's great to have you back. Now, Catherine Layden is here with one of her favourites. Yes, savoury flan time, Catherine. Or a quiche. Oh. <laughs> is it a quiche or a savoury flan? Oh, the same. Same? Mm. Okay. Okay. One of and my favourites. Totally easy to make and taste. We can tell. Look Sorry. at it. Like, look at it there. <laughs> that, that was a full one on myself and Tommy started into it. Do not blame me, <laughs> Al. You've been I've cooking into fright, it. so it did. Anyway, it's absolutely delicious. Here, we're just going to make a basic short crust pastry, Tommy. Okay. Basic short crust pastry. Hot or cold things. butter? Cold, but this is a bit hot from the heat in here at the moment. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, we won't go anyway, into that. 225 grams, 8 ounces of plain flour. To that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt and some freshly ground pepper. Now, pinch of salt. Oh, missed the Where are you, Paul? Where are you? <laughs> here we have... got carried away there for a minute. Here we have 125 grams, 4 ounces of butter or margarine. Cold, if possible. OK. And short crust pastry is half fat to flour. So eight ounces of flour, four ounces of um, oh, butter oh, or margarine. OK. Coarsely rub that through. But it doesn't, you can, yeah, coarse, you kind of, doesn't yeah. have to be right in. Now, if you're, no, not just lumps of butter about the size of an well, almond or half a walnut mixed through is sufficient. <clears throat> now, the less handling it gets, the better. We now bind the ingredients with a few tablespoonfuls of cold water and you bring that together with a knife. Now, Alan, when I'm doing this, wow. you might... Take the one I've rolled out earlier out of the fridge for me. OK. Because if, there's a tip indeed, if your butter is any way soft as mine is, when you roll out your pastry, line your tin and then put it into the fridge for a half an hour. Oh, right, there you go. So that's... Oh, my goodness, look like at that one. Yeah, that's it. You can also, by the way, freeze that and it's particularly good. Now, there we have the pastry. That can also be frozen. Oh, you can freeze it then and uh, oh. take it out. Yeah, yeah oh, perfect. Great. Very simple. Ever, yeah. Roll it out, line your tin. Now... Into that, we're going to put one finely chopped onion. Well, that, they're not very finely chopped, but they're chopped Oh, enough. they're lovely. OK, bite into it. Here I have some lard onions. You could use um, leftover cold sliced ham. So, but that bacon. Is, so the ham is cooked, so it's previously cooked, but the no, onions aren't. Exactly. Okay. Now, the lard onions are cooked. Now, just put them in a pan last night, cook them. Yeah. And I didn't add any fat, because there's a fair bit of fat in that yeah. as it is. But what I do is add a drop of wine left at the end of a bottle. All right. I just did. You? I did. Ever? I never got it. Right. <laughs> Very seldom that happens in my house, but it happened. <laughs> now, and you actually poured it into the lard hands. Yeah. So I'm going into wow, the pan. Okay. The red wine. Red wine, yeah. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, but you wouldn't cook the onions. You, Not necessarily. No, no, I like the bite. To. I like a bite of yeah, onion. I don't do, like yeah. the onions going yeah. old. Yeah. You know, mushy in it. Now, about four ounces of grated cheddar cheese. And then onto that, we're going to put our sliced tomatoes. So, I mean, that couldn't be easier. The it's hardest very part, simple. The hardest part, really, is lining your tin with the, um, the pastry. With the pastry, yeah. Now, have you now, forgot to put the milk in? No, it's coming up now in a minute. Oh, wow. Thanks for keeping your eye on me. You pour, well done. pour that over the top. Some sliced tomatoes on top. And then we just add two eggs that I've beaten into 300 mils or a half pint of um, milk, ordinary milk, likely. So all that? Won't all go in now. Oh, no, OK. Because I'm using a slightly smaller tin than I suggest in the, um, in the recipe. Because I'd say the hardest part of this is getting that like out get, of the tin. No, I thought we have a tip for that now in a minute for you. Oh, oh Tommy. <laughs> oh, we're right, in for a treat. These boys morning. are all picking up on my tips. Well done. Just gently add the milk. Now, don't fill it too much. How do you, do you, do you, you know when you see watch it, it coming up the side? And when side. it starts coming to the edge, stop pouring in your milk. OK. Because otherwise it's going to boil over and you're yeah. in trouble. Now, here's the one which goes to the oven just a few minutes ago. It's still very hot, actually. Oh, watch out your fingers. Now, I like to put my quiche on a tray like that because sometimes, if you're not careful enough, it can boil over okay. and give you extra work so with the, right, the cleaning up after. The oven will be in yeah. bits, yeah. 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 
375 Fahrenheit, 190 centigrade, gas mark 5, for about 35 to 40 minutes. Oh, OK. OK, okay. in she goes. Now, a tip. Mm -hmm. How to okay. take it out of the tin. Here we go, yes. I'm using How a loose you... bottom tin. You lift it up on a cup of A remote. cup of coffee. Ah! For that. Now. Look at that. How do you do that, though? I just sat So the, the base it's a loose is on, bottom oh, tin. Loose bottom ones. tin, yeah. Now, if you do it without a loose bottom tin, you're better off cutting it in the tin itself. Oh, but yeah. you don't get the nice fluted effect. Look at that. If you're not so, using Catherine, it. is that why you put the, the, the thing in the fridge? Because, like, when you're pouring that <laughs> liquid in, it, like, it's not going through it, it's holding yeah, it all there. Yeah, some people pre-bake it first. I don't. And by having it in the fridge or even the freezer the pastry for 10 minutes, in the fridge, yeah. you won't have a soggy bottom. You won't have a soggy bottom. You won't have a soggy bottom, Tommy. You have a soggy bottom. Look Catherine, I have to say, I'm going to have another slice of that one, yeah. Catherine. That looks nice and warm as well. Even oh, do you, do you want the hot one? It's oh, yeah. absolutely... I just have to say, Catherine, no, it's absolutely delicious. It's uh, delicious. I only had a tiny slice just because we need to make it look... Knife, knife Thank for you. Tommy. Thank you. Thank you so much My for that. Pleasure. Catherine Layton, as always, a pleasure. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Ireland AM Now. A brand new study shows, I don't know if this is going to be a shock horror, that women do more work in the house. So we're wondering what you make of that in your house. Is it gender or not? Are the lads doing loads of work? 089 6 Alan is very fashionable this morning. What's our theme for fashion today, Alan? Now we're getting set. If you're getting any party invites, I get none. So what happens to me, Rob? I just don't go anywhere. We'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> All right. So you have some styles if you are getting invited to fancy we parties. We do. We do. This is fab. Exactly. We have everything this morning from birthdays, barbecues, garden parties, and everything else in between that you'll have this summer. Gorgeous look here. They're all available from Manor Mill Shopping Centre. Manute, we're taking a look at florals, prints like this this morning. This is a beautiful piece and a piece that you could really dress up or dress down for a garden party like we've done it today. It actually is gorgeous. Yeah. Just everybody's um, commenting on that. So looking forward to some fashion Thank a little later on now. The kids fancy getting their hands dirty this summer. Tommy has an answer. Tommy, reveal all. Yeah, it's not just all about the kids. I'm channeling my in, inner Derek Hartigan this morning. Now, if it's a summer camp you want with the difference mark kelly from the school of irish archaeology joins me with a group of kids in the background they're having such fun mark how are you tommy archaeology camps like it's not just for kids but this is something a lot of kids going into the summer holidays could really enjoy yeah no it's something uh, really exciting for children and also for big kids as well you know they get to excavate this is one of our big draws for the archaeology camps the big dig and there's these camps all through the summer as well for these kids? Yeah, we're running them all summer long, so right from the 3rd of July right up onto the 20th of August in about five different locations nationwide. Amazing, amazing. You dig up all this treasure. We're going to be talking to you later on at 9.45. We'll catch up with Markman. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This morning should begin mostly dry, bright and clear through northern areas. As the morning progresses, cloud amounts will decrease through southern areas, giving way to some nice prolonged spells of sunshine. Highest temperatures of 14 to 18 degrees. A pleasant afternoon ahead with clear, bright, sunny spells for most areas, aside from western areas of Ulster and Connacht. The winds will remain light with maximum temperatures of 15 to 18 degrees. And staying dry tonight with a fair amount of cloud around, showers are likely through Munster Lowest temperatures overnight of 3 to 9 degrees. Chill insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Hello, you're very welcome back. Now, earlier on, we were talking a little bit about many things. Many. But one of those was about... Philip Schofield decided that to uh, Tommy is taking away. over. He will be on this morning, starting Alan, in that September. Was a secret. Oh, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Got the cat out of the bag with that one, didn't he? <laughs> um, but we have an awful lot of text messages coming in from, and one of the ones I like, and I, I do think uh, 
Sarah, Sarah has a point on this. I think it's a disgrace how Philip Schofield has been vilified in the press, from his relationships to the fact he sounded like a bit of a grump on set. It's all needless character assassination of the man. And I do believe that there's been, like, stamping on someone when they're down, when we don't really know what... Like, nobody he's knows. down and we don't really know why. No, nobody like, knows. what has he done? Um, and he's been absolutely hammered. I think GB News in the UK have been the worst on it. They've been dragging every guest on that maybe have been on once. There was somebody on that we were on like 10 years ago to promote a book, and they're like, and tell me, was he not nice to you? <laughs> and your one was going, no, he was very dismissive. And they were going, tell me more, what did he so say? And you're just going, for God's sake, you're dragging on anyone and nobody impartially there to go, well, he's just very professional or he does his job yeah. well. Um, and he, or like, to give you a bit of insight, we've had people on here who have obviously been on this morning. We're always asking them, how's it going? And they just said, they're so busy. You don't get to talk to them beforehand. Yeah. Isn't that what they said? They're always like, like, they're doing that and then you're over there and then they come over, they say hello, perfectly pleasant, and then they go on with and their... And they're like, like that on this show, Al. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, we're always like, like this. Because, he hasn't got uh, his cup of tea in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> because grump. if you actually do watch the show, you can understand understand they're doing an item they have a commercial break to get to another part of the set sit down chat to those guests maybe very briefly before they do the interview i know we the do the job too here it's i know but that's job, what i'm saying we're a lot busy but like here, if you actually. if you're that busy like maybe you can't be joe here says i would love to see a documentary about what goes on behind the scenes of this morning it sounds better than anything it sure does Curry or emmerdale and um, pat has said i'd like to see either rylan or bradley walsh take over both very like well not sure by craig doyle or dermot o'leary i up. love them both on this morning craig, I like and, craig dermot. and dermot yeah, yeah. who would good. you like to see take over do you see dermot Tommy Bo <laughs> I don't know if Dermot well, we could. Does so Dermot funny. do a daily radio show for the BBC or is it weekends? Dermot O'Leary does BBC Radio 2 at the weekends. He's doing weekends. X Factor just, is it? Has it done X Factor? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it will be interesting when Dancing on Ice comes back in January. And now Holly has to step back from that. Uh, that's January. That, Philip gets that. It's like when you're, you know, when you're well, having not, a divorce. No, no. Surely you've got to get, get something, you know? Okay. If Phil has stepped down from this morning, surely that's him done, though. Like, what, like, why? The cube! But, but, what's he, but what's he stepped down for? This is what I don't get. We don't is, know. We've got to find out. But We're if he has stepped for down for something out. else, surely he's not going to get Dancing Rice to the Cube or uh, it, The else. statement from ITV said he will be getting his own primetime slot. He will continue to present the Soap, the soap Awards Makes and no The Cube. Makes no sense to me. There we go. You'll see uh, it's going to be Dermot and Alison on at 10 a.m. just after us. Yeah. Keep keep watching. <laughs> Keep watching. Oh, and coming we're up next. Glued. We're glued. Coming up next, we're going to get a lesson. And guess what? Archaeology. There we go. Digging for dirt. Digging That's for dirt. Doing. That's Digging what we're doing. Digging for dirt. <laughs> Now, we're going all out archaeology this morning and we've got some budding historians excavating away behind us. And Amazing. I don't want to hear any jokes about being an old wreck, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I we find an Alan in there <laughs> very shortly. Coming up, uh, we're going to talk about making archaeology exciting as Mark from the School of Irish Archaeology. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning. Great to have you with us. This is the school of... Our, oh, we've got the big axe in the background as well. <laughs> really exciting for a lot of kids to get involved in. Yeah, we run uh, summer camps um, and camps during the school holidays. And we also, we visit a lot of primary and secondary schools throughout the year. So we're uh, extremely busy at the moment and getting ready for the summer yeah. to go digging with all the kids. And where did this idea come from? Uh, it came out of uh, my desperation <laughs> uh, from, from the recession, basically. Okay. Uh, after losing the job, we, I re reinvented myself and recreated like a... Uh, so oh, well, what, what could I do that's good and bring something to the to the local community? So decided to bring archaeology to the classroom and got this on wheels. And so for people, like, explain to us what is archaeology? Well, archaeology is the study of the human past. So what we really focus on, and especially with the children, is getting them to understand who they are and where they came from and also to understand everything about our ancient ancestors and to learn all about the achievements of our ancient ancestors 
and to learn about all the ancient crafts and technologies that they invented. Because they have some fabulous stuff in Dublin and Dublinia and all the thing about the Vikings and everything like that. But the big dig here, what you have, is fascinating because it gets them in an interactive way of doing it because you obviously fill this with all little bones yeah. and little things. So they're digging and they find stuff and then they, you talk about what it is. Exactly. What we want to get the children really to understand is to, is to recreate the past for them. Yeah. So we get them to excavate in the Viking house. So this is based on the wood key excavation, excavations of the 19, late 1970s and 80s. Okay. And they get to find, as you can see, axes and swords. <clears throat> and to understand what the lives of these people were like about uh, thousands yeah, years ago. Can I ask you about these things? So you have axes and swords, you have skeletons and horns. Yeah. Like, would these have been found, like, dug up in ruins and, and around Ireland? Absolutely, like, yeah, well, we have not just uh, Viking artefacts. So we have, like, obviously, Stone Age tools. We have animal bone, obviously, we call this eco-fact. So these are sort of natural Do objects. Do we know what animal that was, would have been? Do you want to have a guess? No, no. A horse. Uh -huh. Horse. Well done. Is it a horse? There yeah. we go. So, it's got teeth like yeah. Alan. These <laughs> love... <laughs> well, there you go. So, yes. <laughs> Same colour anyway. Um... So we have... <laughs> <laughs> right. So all these are like, I used to love digging when I was a kid yeah. like and going out into field and thinking and finding treasure and stuff. And this, a camp like this would be really lots of fun. Will Can we... you talk us through some of the, these, just these here, these helmets, these like are, they, these the, were, were these found? These are, these are sort of museum uh, copies Pieces, uh, right. based on museum replicas. This is uh, Germundu helmets. It actually comes from Sweden, Burka in Sweden. And there's only been a few of these excavated in the world. Um, in, in basically Scandinavia. And yeah, this is based on a replica, on an actual real, real life. Like, and the thing is, the stuff that they wore and weighed a ton. You know, could you imagine? And then they had to go into battle <laughs> with yeah, this thing. Yeah, that plus this, plus your chain. Yeah. You know? So you can imagine what it'd be like running around the field all day. That's it wouldn't incredible. be great fun. Come on, we'll bring a chat to a few of the kids here as yeah. well. Uh, Luan is here as well, aren't you, Luan? Yeah, hi. hi, how are you? Loving it. What is it about archaeology? You seem to love it. Um, I, I just like history in general. Really? Yes. And have you dug up at home or have you found anything cool when you've been out doing this? Um, so once in school, I found, I found like, um, a cow vertebra. A cow, cow vertebra? Yeah. OK. Oh, wow. And what have you found here this morning? What's in your box there? What, what pieces um, have you found? Well, I found this axe. You found that big axe. You have to obviously be careful with that. Yeah. Um, um I, I found a spoon to go with the spoon. I found a bowl. Wow. Hey. Um actually that's yeah, the other way around. Um I found a piece of leather. Looks a piece um, of leather there. And, and the Anya's couch. Anya's here busy digging away as well. Um, Anya, what are you finding? Uh, I'm not sure what this is yet. But... Oh yeah, oh so that's the part of the fun part. So you you start seeing something and then have you got to be very careful then and dig around it so you don't damage it? Yeah. Is that part of it as well? And yeah. you love history too. Yeah. And that's why you love this. Yeah. That's great. And tell and us, did you did you make shoes out of a piece of leather? Yeah. How did you do it? So we had leather and a piece of cord, and you wove it in and out of the holes in the leather, and then you put your hand in it um, to make it the right shape, and you pulled the cord, and then you tied the laces, and they were Viking bag shoes. Viking shoes. Viking wow. shoes. Luan's, Lu, Luan's after finding something there. What did you find? Animal bone. Oh, so it's an animal bone. Is that an artifact or an eco-fact? Eco fact. Eco What's an eco-fact, wow. Luan? Um, something that is over 100 years old and is natural. Oh, there we go. Wow. And what's there an artifact? Go. Something that that um. Something that is over 100 years old and is not natural. Wow. Man, yeah, there we what? go. Look at him. <laughs> he should be taking, Luan, you should be taking these classes as well. He's teaching me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this, but like, these, like, <clears throat> kids must love this. Like, history yeah. is really exciting at, at that such a young age as well. And then digging for treasure and digging for fun things as well. Yeah, I mean, it's innate in everybody, isn't it? Like, I mean, the sense of discovery. So for kids, especially, the it's 
just what makes humans great is the imagination or creativity. Yeah. Have, so, you been, have you found anything? Because like, you're obviously into this as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a commercial archaeologist for the last 23 years. Yeah. So my last excavation would have been in Ship Street, out in, just beside Dublin Castle yeah. there. We excavated basically Dublin, the, the, the Black Pool, yes. uh, the, where the Vikings would have settled, mm -hmm. the Long Fort there. And we excavated the remains of two Viking houses there. And up to about nearly 30, 40,000 associated. How, how exciting is that when you come across something like that and you are uncovering history? Well, I, I suppose being from Dublin as well and then being able to uncover the origins of the city uh, is pretty amazing. Yeah. And to excavate Viking structures is something I always dreamt of. And I've only had two occasions in my lifetime to do it. So. That was amazing. And so you're saying you take this around to schools and colleges, and so you take this. Yeah. It arrives like this with the big pit. Yeah, well, it, it's it's obviously it's a fold up. It's desi designed it so it folds up, uh, but it's a mobile Viking house excavation. So yeah, we do, we're doing kaleidoscope this year. We do the likes of electric picnics, all family oh, so fun days. So you do family fun yeah, days that people come in. Yeah, we do schools, libraries, you name it, we're all over the country, so. And so if people want to get involved in the camps this year and this summer, go to sia.ie. That's the School one, yeah. of Irish Archaeology. Yeah, and you'll see all our camps listed. Well, yeah, look at that. Brilliant. When you have children like that and they have a growing interest in it, it's fascinating. So yeah. thank you very much for Mark, joining no us Thank this you this so morning. much for Cheers, joining thanks, us. Guys. Check it out if you want to get the kids busy this summer. Now, lots more still to come here on Ireland Day. We'll see you back after this short break. Well done, guys. Summer is here and hopefully we'll start to see the start of some amazing weather and outdoor parties. Yes, stylist Rob Condon is here with looks if you get invited to stuff like Rob does and we don't. <laughs> so <laughs> we're in that everything. Man who literally <laughs> never stays in. <laughs> okay. Let's feel sorry let's, for us. Let's what? get to it. Let's get to it. We are. We're taking a look at the perfect outfits for summer barbecues, maybe birthdays, garden parties, and everything else in between. And they're all pieces that you can mix and match so you can dress them up. I dress them down. Okay, lovely. Sarah's first. first. Sarah, yeah, yeah, Sarah's up first, and all of her looks this morning are available from Manor Mills Shopping Centre in Ooh, the Nude. Ooh, look at so this. So with Sarah, we've gone with this gorgeous outfit here. Um, we've gone with the denim jacket, just bringing in a really key piece with that look. But first off, we have gone with these really nice circular sunglasses, gold rim to these sunglasses. They're not too oversized either. Mm. They're available from Carrick Dunn. But I think with garden parties, um, summer parties, you always want to have a good pair of sunglasses. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and the earrings. And then with the earrings, we've gone with a really simple, chic earring. They're a drop earring, um, gold, and they're just a really cool piece to add to your wardrobe. And a celestial piece on the necklace. Yes, then we've gone quite simple. Is I it? think with the, the, with the neckline, no, it's just a moon shape. Oh, it's a moon shape, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, moon shape um, necklace there. I think it's quite simple, it's chic, and with that neckline, I think it works really well. And because there's quite a um, There's quite a dramatic, plunging neckline on this dress. There is, and yes. usually with a plunging neckline, you can go dramatic with your jewellery, but I think because the dress is quite a, a big And you've print. just, as you said, a denim jacket you'll always have in your wardrobe just to pull out and do exactly. whatever. Exactly. on whatever, like any occasion, like you're dressing this down with this. Yeah, exactly. So I think as well, as the temperatures are kind of rising at the moment mm. and as they will into summer, still in the evenings, it can be quite chilly. So a denim jacket is a great go-to piece. If you want to make it a little bit more retro, you could go with a leather jacket, but I've gone a little bit oversized with this one here, um, just so you can use it as a layer and piece as well. fab. And then with the dress, as we said, it's a plunging neckline, button detail. Oh, a little cap sleeve, You can lovely. see it's elasticated. There's a cap sleeve to it. And there's a really great fit and flair to this dress as well. You can see at the end, there's lots of material to it, making it a little bit more heavy, so it's gonna just move really well. Um, but also, I think you could take this into your occasion wear wardrobe. We've kept it quite Completely. casual with well, the totally, denim jacket, yeah. but definitely by changing around your accessories, um, it would really work. With the bag, then we've gone with that kind of basket wicker style bag. We've used as a, as a clutch, but you can see there is a strap that's yes. attached to it. So if you wanted to go crossbody, make it a little bit more casual. I have never met a basket bag I don't like. It's actually <laughs> becoming a problem. They it's go bad. with everything it's as bad. well. A basket then bag we have finished it off with the wedges there. So as I was saying, if you wanted to dress it up, I'd go with maybe a stiletto with this. Yeah. And you could really, like a strappy gold sandal would work yeah, really well absolutely. with it. But with these wedges, you're going to get so much wear out of them over summer. With any summer dress you have in your wardrobe or even a pair of white jeans, they're going to work 
beautiful. Great Thank dress. you, Sarah. Lovely. Cheers, Sally. Sally. Sally is with Sally, us. Sally, come out. Sally. Come out, Sally. Oh, look at these way. glasses. So we've gone quite glam with Sally's look here because lots of garden parties can be quite glamorous or any summer events that you might have. So we've gone quite glam with Sally this morning. Very John Great Collins. Great glasses. Very John <laughs> Collins here. We've gone with these really oversized sunglasses. They're tortoise shell. You can see to the side then there's a gold detail into them as well. Yeah. Um, but a really statement pair of glasses. Um, and a great price as well that you're able to just put them in your yeah, handbag. Yeah, I'm surprised that they're um, that, is, that They're well, great. I was going to say cheap, affordable. Affordable, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then the earrings. And then are with the up. earrings, we've gone with um, from Carrig Dunn. There are gold earrings. You can see there's the hoop, but there's also the pearl detail there, which we have matched back yeah. in with the buttons of the blazer. The blazer so it's versatile, look. of course. Yes, mm. exactly. Um, white blazer here, available from Dunn Stores, and you can see just faux pocket detail, and you can see the button here. So it's a long line blazer, but there is a pearl detail into the button yeah. of it, which I think yeah. really just dresses it up. Whether you're throwing it with a pair of jeans or over a uh, over a dress yeah. here this morning like we've yeah, done. It's lovely. And, and the dress. dress. And then with the dress, it's buttoned down to the waist. It's elasticated waistline. Um, pink back to this, <clears throat> base to this dress. And then floral print, oversized floral print, which I think is quite nice because it's not too busy of a print. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with this. And you can see the elasticated waistline. It's belted at the middle, um, tying in there. But you could go with a different coloured belt yeah. as well if you wanted to bring. And you're picking um, up what's in the sunglasses in the shoes with the chain gold detailing yes, as well. Yes, exactly. So with the shoes, then we've gone with that chain gold detail in there. Um, strappy sandal that are going to go with so many different things in your wardrobe because of the colour, bringing that back in with the They're blazer. lovely sandals, Lovely aren't pair of shoes. They? Yeah, really They're really gorgeous. Shoes. Sally, you're fabulous you this morning. You look gorgeous there, Sally. <laughs> Thank you. is up next. Yeah, we've got another great look here from Manor Mill Shopping Centre in Maynooth. Going with a little Clonard. headpiece. Yes, we've gone with a headpiece. Um, so we've got the hairband here, which is quite a statement hairband. I think even if you have a dress in your wardrobe, maybe a black dress, and you want to just transform it, going with something like this headpiece is going to work for any kind of summer event that you would have. You can see the pearl detail into it and then those oversized stones. Yeah. A really great, really statement piece. You could bring this to a summer wedding or mm. also if you wanted to with a garden party yeah. just to dress up a dress, um, it's the perfect piece to add. Feels like you're going to be invited to Buckingham Palace with the amount of garden parties you're going to. Those <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, but I'm, I'm thinking uh, you people, know, Arsene Uthron. Do people have garden parties? <laughs> people uh, have garden parties. You call it like a, uh, you come round for the barbecue. Yeah. Is that yeah. a garden party? Round yeah. for a cup of tea and you take yeah, it out to yeah. the garden. That's what happens. Or trying to dress it up here and have a low on the top. You're being posh. You're yes. being posh. Um, so gorgeous hoop earrings and now this dress. Yeah, we've got this dress which is available from Divine Boutique. It's a wrap dress, V-neckline to it. You can see the sleeve detail, that kind of flute sleeve. Brilliant print to this dress. And you can see it's all about the fit and flair to the end of it. A beautiful dress that I think you could definitely bring to any summer event. So any weddings that you um, might have coming up by changing your accessories. With the bag, we're seeing that wicker basket style bag. Mm -hmm. So it is a clutch envelope style bag there, but it just works so well. Even going with a hat with this look would work. Bracelet's and then the great. bracelet, we've got the gold chain detail to it, and then that pink stone, which kind of matches back in with the stone in the uh, headpiece yeah, there. Yeah, all working. Also. And now mm. we've got the gladiator sandals Yeah, as well. and then we've gone with a pair of gladiator flat sandals here. So I think that's what's going to be the make or break of the outfit. If you want to dress it down, yeah. going with a yeah. sandal like this. If you want to dress it up, go with a strappy gold heel with this, and it's going to work really well. Great dress, Blonde. Yeah. You're fabulous. Thank you so much for They're that. They're all lovely, oh, aren't they? they? Are. And here's the one we saw earlier on, which I think is yeah, a bit of a wow. This is it definitely really my favourite piece here from Sorrento Boutique at Manor Mill Shopping Centre. It's all about that blue tone. I think it's just perfect. Whether you want to dress it up or dress it down. First off, we've got the earrings there and we've gone with that blue tone. You can see the really yeah. dramatic statement and then it goes down into that fringed blue earring. And then we've got, um, this is a normal shirt, I assume, that you have just tied up, right? Yeah, we've just tied the shirt up here just to make the dress a little bit more casual yeah. that you can show that if you've bought this piece for an occasion by throwing a shirt over, throwing a leather jacket over it, it's going to work to just dress it down. Um, it's a linen shirt. You can see the detail into the side of it. Yeah. So it's tied in at the side, that cut out detail into it. It is a little bit longer, so if you wanted to wear it with jeans um, in your wardrobe, you definitely could do that as well. But then underneath it, we have this amazing dress. You can see the gold detail go. embroidered. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Um, 
you can see there's so much it's so much material to this dress that but it's quite lightweight as well yeah um, but at the back of it if Sarah just turns around is where the statement is oh that, Sarah such a great dress to bring on holidays as well it is isn't it's it? a dress that you're going to have every summer it's drawing yeah. your suitcase Gosh, so whether you buy it for an event and then you, you can see the... She's got great shoulder blades. <laughs> oh, Sarah, sick, you've got great shoulder blades. Sorry, go on in there. And you can see just the shape to this dress is amazing. I think it's a great investment piece to buy for your wardrobe. I love the sandals, the sandals. with it. Yeah, they're a beautiful pair of sandals. You can see the leaf detail which is going to the side of it. Again, those sandals with a pair of shorts, white jeans, they're going to work with those lots of different things mm. in your wardrobe. They're um, great. Some gorgeous Gorgeous today, pieces right? now today. Really. All Thank we need you. now is the invites. All you need is the invites. Into the in Someone box. invite Alan to a garden party this summer. <laughs> Oop, they're on a hair and he's mad for a garden party. Surely you're having something in the hours. He'd love to be there. Ah, I hosted Condon. one of them already. Thank I you want those. something else. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is he like? After the break, is there still a battle of the sexes when it comes to housework? Not in my house. What is when you're in a same-sex relationship? Not in my house, yeah. We'll talk to you in a minute. A new study taken from ActionAid App Care Diary has found... Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> Just Google that. <laughs> in Ireland found that on average, women spend twice as much time doing housework compared to men. Here to discuss who should be doing what around the house, our broadcaster Keith Walsh and writer and columnist Stephanie Preisner. Good morning to you both. It's lovely to have you here. Sure, like, haven't we been discussing this since the dawn of time, since there's been talking heads on couches, Stephanie? We have. We absolutely have. And I'm not sure that having an app to keep track of things is the best way to go. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's going to create resentment. Yeah, do you think that in your house, if you're there going, well, look, look, I did the dishes last week at this exact time. Like, it's... I think overall it doesn't balance out across the day, but across, like, in my... In, in my situation, it balances out across maybe the week or yeah. the month. Yeah. And, you know, I do think that we're set up wrong. So, like, I had a baby. I was given the maternity leave. And so, naturally, I am about the house more and I have to clean up because otherwise we will die living in our own filth. Mm -hmm. And And then that just becomes the norm. And then, you know, so we have delegated tasks yeah. to each other. It creates resentment sometimes, I would imagine, when you are the primary caregiver when a baby is so small. Yes, but right? it's, it's resentment at men, not my man, yeah. at the patriarchy, at the fact that this is the way that it is set up, you know? Yep. And they have this word husband oh. as though... Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll get to, I have a rant uh, there. Keith, um, do you think there are stereotypically mask like listen we actually have blue and pink jobs in our house that's what? that's how bad it is no what? yeah yeah no. yeah what well, do you like to color them in the, so, the well, little name three blue jobs a blue yeah. job is taking out the bins for instance another one she said she said blue do, job doing the admin <laughs> Like what like kind of Like paying all the bills and okay. doing all that sort of stuff and cooking. I do a lot of the cooking in the oh, house that's as well. Not typically and what's blue a pink job? job? Would that not be? That's no. a pink job. Balloon, Hoovering, washing, well, well, cleaning the toilet. Stop asking me questions. I forgot, what did you say? Are there still stereotypically well, no, masculine and feminine blue job and a pink job? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying in my house. I was asking you um, in your house. You've become the story now, just the, like Philip. Like all the progress we've made with, um, uh, like, women, uh, the glass ceiling, the you know, getting paid better, you know, we still have a long way to go. But, like, in the house, it still is very much, you know, the burden of the work lands on the woman. And, like, I am... Terrible, like it's terrible that I'm admitting this, but I am terrible around the house. Like, not only do I not do my the, my fair share of the work, but the work I do, it's my wife's job to remind me to do it. <gasps> okay. Like, that, I am the, actually the worst. I'm, can I ask you a question? But the because fact that you know it. He, see, just, that's but, the thing. But, but hold on. I, can I every ask you a week I go, we have an argument. I go, look, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. And then she's like, you, you know, it's like getting late on a Monday. She said, the bin? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But can like, I ask you a question? Is it because there was a study there just last month about men and society because of how we have raised our boys up that you, tech, that you actually just don't see the work? That you could be walking through the house and there could be cups there and whatever, and you don't see it. No, I'm a tidier. You do see it. I am a tidier. I bring things with me. I bring, like my wife leaves things on the stairs, I bring them up the stairs. I bring cups down with me. Yeah. I do I do that sort of stuff. I'm obsessed with the kitchen, so I'm always cleaning the kitchen. I'm a dishwasher guy. Right. You know what I mean? I'll put the dishwasher on even though there's only three plates in it, because I just want everything cleaned away and put away. It's not very environmentally sound. Don't do it, people. So I have things that I'm obsessed with. But I suppose on the grander scheme of things, like the, the hot press and tidying that, or you know, the big jobs. 
but I'm a, men are tidiers. I so agree. something will look tidy, but then uh, a, a, I hate this gender thing as well. But I, and some um, people will walk into a room after another person has tidied it and they go, it's still kind of filthy. Yeah. You know? Like I'm a tidier, but yeah, I'm not very good at cleaning. But Mern, like you said for men, like what's in your house? Oh God, it's him. 100% he does the cooking, we do the cleaning, but he's probably better at the deep cleaning than I am. So it's probably not a gender thing. So it's thing. not a gender thing. No, like. it's a lazy thing. <laughs> but I guess there, it's that it will fall to one person more than the other. Yes. yes. It, it, you have to work quite hard at making it equal. You know, like yeah. my husband would say to me, I'll do anything, just tell me. And we had to, I had to sit down and yeah, say, just I don't me. want to tell you because that, you know, can you just organise dinner? Yeah, okay, what do you want? I have too many decisions to make. Please just present me with the food. But isn't that the thing that, uh, oh as you God. just said present there... Present you with the food. But uh, any time I ask my wife what she wants to eat, it's like, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. I know, but if you it's just very, gave it to her... If you don't give her a choice... Just to eat just it, yeah, because okay. of her choice. The decisions, you know? Well, when you this... ring at lunchtime, you're like, what, what will you want for dinner later? Oh, I'm not hungry. I just had lunch. Don't ring, don't ask. Don't ring just, at lunchtime. Just make it. Okay. Just, yeah, just don't ring. This is going to be a really can interesting I, thing. But can I ask you, because there is this reminding, over over centuries women have had this nag thing. It's not. It's basically saying things that, as you said, you have to be reminded to do mm. things. Dusbands. Dusbands. This is a portmanteau the of a husband who does something. Which what? just shows you that, like, it's a remarkable thing. We have a word for it. A word for a husband who does something because it's so remarkable. It's absolute BS. I just cannot believe... Like, it's like if you look at the verb to father a child and the verb to mother a child. Mm -hmm. They're two... Like, to father a child basically means to have sex with a woman and get them pregnant. Yep. To mother a child is a verb that spans a whole lifetime of a person's life and involves so much work and effort and burden. Like, it's this so dustbin thing. So a dustbind have... is a father who has his own hectic job but still does his fair oh. share. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> heart. <laughs> without being asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keith, you have Like, to I know that we're sitting here. Like, what about same-sex relationships? Yeah. You know, Alan's here. Like, you know, there has to be... It's definitely. I think it's... I, think it's, I don't think it's a gender thing. You think it's a I role it's a thing. thing? But then my, my children but never miss training up... and they never miss matches. And... Hmm? Because of you. Yeah, because that's that's just something that... But is that not something that you were always interested in? Who remembers in? To, that they have to return their library book or that it's PA day or they well, have to I bring two the, euro I in do, for a cake no, sale? No, I do the gear, I wash the boots, I have all the stuff ready, I bring them to the matches. I coach because that's because I'm involved. But and, do you think that women do more, if you look at it at, at a broader scheme of things, when it comes to household chores? And household chores, probably, but keeps talking about other areas and drop-off. That's the fun and all stuff. That stuff. No, we're both busy, like, but she would but never like, do that. And, or she wouldn't want to do it. She's not interested in it. But then, like, she's gone away today, this morning, and then I had, I dropped to the airport, came back, my son was going to school, and I said, I had too many things to do, so I said, here is the Revolut card, get yourself something in the canteen. Job done. <laughs> my wife would have made the sandwiches last night. Like, you know, do you think it's lazy lazy is good? It's, balanced, she's, she's actually she's given out the good Stephanie face. Sorry, she's doing the good I, Stephanie I never face. have any control over what my face is doing. <laughs> but, but, I, I, but, but I brought her... Not that I, I, I feel like I can't say anything. So I dropped her to the airport, bring my son to school, come in here, and I give him the Revolut card for lunch. What do you think, done. Stephanie? Great. Great. Done. <laughs> Great. Stephanie. Just throw money parenting. at the problem. Throw money at the problem. <laughs> throwing money at the problem. <laughs> no, money at the problem. Like, the problem. Like, then it? we were able to sit down and have our breakfast and no one was stressed. Is it, that, is it just about finding a balance with your partner? I think so. I think, like, one of the things that we have done that I think has helped is we have set up a joint email account. Okay. So we have an email account. So when we meet the public health nurse or the creche or the school or the whatever, we give that email address. So at least it's not down to me that all of the contact is coming to me and I have to pass it on. That's good. There has to be a rule, though, that you're not allowed to open the email and not action it. Okay. If you open the email, I just wouldn't go near you it. have well, to I would never log in. I would never log in. But <laughs> you have thing, it on your phone. The other thing is, can I just say on a serious note, my son uh, got the rest of it diagnosed, got diagnosed well. with ADHD and only because my wife, because she just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I was like, yeah. oh, it'd be grand, he'd be grand. Yeah, and like everything for me is like, oh, it'll be grand. Oh, I don't why didn't we do this at quarter past yeah, eight? We would have done this for an hour. Um, it would have been amazing. Writer, Colin, <laughs> Stephanie Preisner. Thank you. She's doing the zombie bitch. Uh, really Thank interesting. You. Let us know again. 0896 111 I'm sure we'll pick oh up God. a lot of messages on that one. We certainly <gasps> will. Now, coming up tomorrow's show, <laughs> Philly McMahon and Rory O'Connor, a.k.a. Rory Stories, tell us about their new GAA initiative. That's tomorrow, but tonight, make sure you tune in to the start of a new three-part series, The Hunt for Ralmo at 9pm. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>